I know you're busy. I don't need to take much in that. I like this little bit. We better have Howard over here. I know you're getting ready to do a documentary. Yeah. Whatever. Hey! Howard. Right. Howard. 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 Bring both of you in and, uh, <laughs> and wrap your knuckles and talk about yeah, well, the commandment, but I think it all I think it off. never gets as bad as it seems oh, sometimes. So. It also helps to have a man who's been there. So. Right. Now, I even back on, when I thought things were getting rough, I went back to 1980 to see what you two guys were saying about each other. <laughs> <laughs> I said, boy, I'm high like this. <laughs> but, uh, well, we got a lot of work to do up here. Alan Simpson's done a great job. And, uh, yeah, Alan's been a good man. Yeah. Really good. So, I guess the treaty's going to be the first big thing. The Foreign Relations Committee has reported out. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of action on the floor. So I, I don't want that amendment to be that she was looking at it. Yeah, Cole and Cal and the speaker are going to be the floor. They're still sort of analyzing. I'm not sure we understand everything. That's a great deal. And you've got to go to Mark's staff. Go to California and build up my well, yeah, first. <laughs> I don't blame you. Leave it Friday? Yeah. yeah. Friday morning. I saw that nice little badge you got. President, I'd like to ask you a few questions um, for my magazine. The magazine's called Looking for Heroes. Yes. And you have been one of the heroes that have been selected. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, first question, since it is called Looking for Heroes, are who are your heroes? Well, you know, that's a very hard question because, you know, normally you could start out with a few historical figures or something of that kind. but. I've come to believe they're just they're too numerous. I would rather to talk about it as to types rather than individuals, because in these several years here, there are so many people that have been brought to my attention or have uh, received a hero's award. Now, you know, there's been a tradition of doing that for young people who have, you know, look at a nice young girl who went into a flaming car and rescued an individual and brought them out just seconds before the car blew up, this sort of thing. But I would have to go back through all the papers to find out the names of those individuals. Right. Now, obviously, we could talk about uh, heroes who won the Congressional Medal of Honor for grave deeds and so forth. But I've come to believe that they're not that exceptional or that few that out there in this great country of ours, in virtually every st stage of, of life and uh, every standard, uh, every day there are people. The other day, yesterday, I was out in the Rose Garden, 57 cancer sufferers. And they were there because all of them, on their own, have volunteered and are working through the Cancer Society to help others and people who have perhaps newly been told that they are suffering from that. And these people come to do what they can to, to help them. 
donors of, uh, of organs for someone that they read about and are willing to, to, to help. Um, I just, I think that uh, here in this land of ours among the so-called common people, uh, there are any number of, of heroes and most of the time they go unsung. Very true. Um, I have in my hand here a history book that a lot of DC public school students use. And it's a little outdated because it ends in 1981. And it's like the very last picture in the book is of your first <laughs> inaugural. Now, when the next president is inaugurated, they're going to update this book. And it, they're going to add a 36th chapter. And that chapter will say, you know, the, the Reagan years. And when they do, when they add that chapter, what would you like it to say? <laughs> well, you know, uh, it seems to be a cliche that anyone in an office like this is worrying about what history will say about them, and that's begun to happen to me now as we come closer to the end of the last year. But you know, you don't really find yourself thinking that. Uh, what you find yourself thinking is the things that you want to get tied up and wrapped up while you're still here. And then it's kind of your own history that Yes, you would look with great pride if you'd been able to achieve that. For example, right now, here we've been uh, battling for all these years. We've got this great economic recovery, 15 and a half million new jobs. We have vastly reduced the tax rates. But contrast to what some of the candidates are saying, the revenues are greater at the lower rates because of a little thing called incentive. and. Uh, but I would like, we've never been able to achieve the balanced budget. We're on a course that we believe is aimed at that, that we can look to at a date down here and see that will be. But I think that until we do what most of our states have done, uh, we're not going to get anywhere. And that is until we have a constitutional amendment that requires a balanced budget. Now, I would, I would walk away justly proud if I could add that to the other things we did we're embraced in a program that hasn't been getting much attention, but working with the governors, I have had a, I came here with a feeling that over the years, over many years, that the federal government had seized power and authority that under the Constitution properly belonged to local communities and to the states. And we have a program called federalism to reverse this and restore that because I think the secret of our greatness is that we are a federation of sovereign states. And those states have provisions and laws and so forth that are their own. And uh, we've made some progress. And that I would be very proud of if we had restored to them the, the leadership that they should have. I suppose foreign policy-wise, something you'd probably want to really be remembered for was your, your liberation of Grenada, I suppose, right? Well. Yes, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And uh, I was very proud the other day when someone, a tourist, returned from there with glowing tales about how beautiful and pleasant it is, but showed me some postcards that they sell there. And the postcards are photographs of, well, like walls with graffiti on them. And it isn't Yankee go home. It's graffiti about God bless the USA and things of that kind. Right. But uh, yeah, but there are other things. The whole buildup of the national security, I don't know that there's anything I'm more proud of than the young men and women who are in uniform in our country today. We, here it is voluntary, no more draft, and we have the highest percentage of high school graduates that we have ever had in the military, even back when we had draft and were forcing them in. And in the intelligence brackets that are used in testing, uh, recruits to find out what proper assignments maybe they should be given. We also have the highest percentage in the top intelligence bracket that we've ever had. Hmm. Um, what do you think are the big differences between when you were 17 and, and the world? Poor family. Uh, but when I was going to college, only then about 7% of the high school graduates in America went on to college. And today, of course, it's, you know, tremendously higher that you get up to things like 70 or 80 percent of them are 
or more uh, go on to college for their education. That is a, is a great difference. Uh, I don't know where, I tell you, I'm proud of the young people too, not only those in uniform. I've had the opportunity to be in a number of high schools or on campuses and see what's going on. I think we, I think we undersold a, a, a few generations uh, back some years with the quality of education and all, but I think today the refurbishing that is going on and the stepping up of uh, improvements in curriculum and all, uh, I think that uh, uh, there is no all that much difference. I think really? you're uh, all ambitious and I, I find when I go to the campuses that uh, you have a good feeling about this country of ours. I know they're signaling me that I should get you out of here because oh. we've gone through time, but Thanks. just one thing, whether this answers your question okay. or not, one thing, if your magazine has an opportunity that is l less understood uh, than it should be by most people, and particularly young people, you know, every country of all these countries in the world has a constitution. And if you read those constitutions, I've read the Soviet constitution, they promise a lot of the things that uh, are in our own. Whether they do them or not, but they promise them. But the difference is so subtle, and yet it is so great that it explains the whole thing. All those other constitutions are government telling the people what government will allow them to do. Ours is based on three words, we the people, and our constitution says these are the things we the people will let government do. And I think that if all of us understood that a little better, we would even be more proud of this country of ours. I hope you will be proud of the paper when it comes out. We'll, we'll send you a couple, we'll come, well, a couple I, of magazines. And I have a terrible feeling I didn't specifically answer many of oh, your questions I got here. some. I got some great stuff. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for okay. the Okay. Well, and don't walk away. You're still wired here. Oh. oh. I think I can. Great. There you are. Maybe I can even do it. I did it to myself. All right. Well, if you do need anything or that didn't get it all, right. yeah, cut it all. We, can, we can get it for you. Great. It's a pleasure to talk. Oh, I'm afraid I filibustered a little bit. Oh, it's fine. Oh, um, I just get one picture of her. Because I'm was, I was always like turning this way. I get one picture of her. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank nice you. to see you. Thank you.